Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. You know, this is my favorite time of year. Football season, tailgating. We're so excited to share with you three great recipes today for tailgating. But we're also celebrating the fact that we've made it to 12 years because of all of you. And we're in 42 metropolitan markets. We're welcoming today one of our newest markets, WKRN in Nashville, Tennessee. Home of the Grand Ole Opry, the Country Music Hall, of Fame and now the Very Vera Show. So welcome to all of you. So today we're making three great recipes as I said. We're going to start with the cheese strip. There's a great bite-sized appetizer that you're going to pull right out of the freezer. And in the south it's not tailgating without the buffalo chicken dip. That's just amazing. And then finally we're going to do a semi-homemade cake that is delicious applesauce cake. And in Vera's Corner today I'm going to show you how to make a treat with an apple for snacks and to garnish. So let's get started on those cheese strip and get this party on the road. All right, so this is one of my absolute favorite recipes and I'm just so happy today because football season is back and my family just loves it and we love these recipes to make to enjoy while we're watching the game. And so this is the cheese strip. And when I was a newlywed in Cartersville, Georgia, back in the middle 70s, the neighbor across the street was just the hostess of Cartersville. And when she invited us over to have a cocktail to welcome us to the neighborhood, she made this recipe. And I actually have the recipe card that she wrote that night for me. And I've used it so many times that it's literally completely fallen apart. So I love it. I was so happy to put it in the new cookbook. So this recipe starts with freshly grated sharp cheddar cheese. And you know, I really do get specific about whether or not to grate the cheese because all of the seasonings just really go into that cheese when it's not coated with some sort of processing material. Um, so the cheese is grated. Now I'm gonna add in freshly fried crumbled bacon and I picked this up at the fresh market. I love their deli bacon. So this is just nice little bite-sized pieces. I've got slivered almonds. I've got Vidalia onions and we've chopped these very fine. And as you can see, that's probably the, the most of any of the ingredients in this. So there is a good bit of onion in it, but you could you know, take some of that away if you didn't want to have as many onions, but I recommend making it exactly the way I've written it. All right, now we've got Hellman's mayonnaise. We'll add that in. And what I did in advance was I went ahead and took my Pepperidge Farm thinly sliced white bread and I cut the crust off of it so that you're gonna go all the way to the edge with this mixture when you're making it. And you're probably wondering about the little white towel, the paper towel that's on top of it. But my mother-in-law taught me this trick years ago, and it's to dampen a towel when you're making tea sandwiches or anything that uses bread, and it keeps the bread moist while you're working with it. All right, so this is when I say that this is gonna make quite a bit, but the way you store this appetizer is in your freezer in a Ziploc bag. So just, you know, just take the time, put your favorite music on, and just look forward to getting something done that you've used your time wisely. So when you need something quick, all you have to do is go to the freezer to get it. So at this point, I'm using just a small little spreader. This is actually the spreader that we use when we ice our cakes. We've had these in our kitchen for years. All right, so once you've spread it all the way to the edge, then this one slice is going to turn into thirds. So I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to cut three strips. And I have my sheet pan ready over here. And you know, choose a sheet pan that will go in your freezer appropriately if you need to use one half the size to be able to pull that off. And I'll take my spreader and make sure that spread really well right there. But you're gonna put this in the freezer on the sheet pan because you've gotta get it frozen solid before you can put it into the Ziploc bag. Once it's frozen, they're, they're just gonna be in the bag all together. And what I love about it is when somebody pops in unexpectedly, you can just pop 
six or eight of these into the oven and you've got a quick little bite size appetizer. And they'll probably be just like I was with Jenny Cole back in the 70s. And they'll say, can I have that recipe? All right, so we'll finish getting this ready for the freezer. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on that buffalo chicken dip that everybody loves. So I'll see you back in just a minute. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me, we are celebrating that football season is back. We are so excited and honestly making tailgate food is just fall entertaining. Everybody can go outside, it's nice, it's pleasant and certainly getting in front of an audience of people at a game is a lot of fun. And you might want to be the tailgate sweetheart this year by bringing something unusual or different that maybe your group of friends has not had. So we just finished the cheese strips and I guarantee you they have never had that recipe unless they bought the book and have already made it. So I certainly hope that you'll try that one. But now we're on the buffalo chicken dip and this is a noted dip in the south. Everybody absolutely loves it. So let me tell you what I did in advance and actually what I'm doing right now is just getting this cream cheese nice and creamy. We let it come to room temperature. Um, you can zap it in the microwave for a few seconds if you need to, but that's ready to go. But the chicken, this is just chicken breast that I always pick up at the Fresh Market on Tuesdays when they're on sales. Chicken and chuck is always on sale on Tuesday. So you can buy it and you can stick it in the freezer and pull it out when you get ready to make this dish. But you know, for years and years and years, you would take it out of the hot water, take your forks and shred it. And it just, you know, it took a minute. Well, who knew that you could do that in your KitchenAid mixer on top of the counter? And look how perfectly it's shredded. I mean, it's just the best. So that's what we've gone ahead and done. So now to this cream cheese mixture, I'm gonna add in the dry ranch dressing you know, that you just pick up where the salad dressings are. And then this is your um, buffalo sauce that you're gonna add into that as well. All right. So there are many different ways that you can transport this or what you can do with it. If you've got a crowd coming, then you might wanna do this in a crock pot, which would be an easy thing to transport for tailgating but we're not gonna have that many folks for this one. So what we're gonna do is put it in the same dish that you would do if you're gonna be in your family room or outside on the patio, just an eight by eight or nine by nine um, Pyrex uh, casserole dish that you love. And I've sprayed it with pan spray and then we're just gonna cook it in that. All right, so let's add the chicken into this. And you see what I mean about how beautifully that shreds. Y'all can do this for lots of things like chicken casseroles. You know, it's just a great tip. So we're gonna mix this together. And then once this is done, we're gonna put it into the casserole dish and then top it with the sharp cheddar cheese. So just a reminder when you're doing this, you know, hot things should be hot, but this is actually good at room temperature. So if it has cooled down just a bit when you get there, there's no problem. All right, so we'll get this in the oven and when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on the applesauce cake, which is a semi-homemade recipe that you're gonna love. And in Vera's Corner today, we're gonna do apple chips to garnish that but it's also a great snack for the kids. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. You know, they say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, I've got a quick and easy trick that will provide a healthy and convenient snack at almost any time. Start with your favorite apple. Any apple will work, but the baking time and taste may vary depending on the type. For a sweeter chip, use Gaylor or Honeycrisp. For a more tart snack, use Granny Smith. If you want to really switch it up, try a pinata apple for a unique tropical twist. Preheat your oven to 200. Baking at a low temperature allows the apples to slowly lose moisture and prevent burning. Core your apples. This will ensure that you do not have any rough bits 
or seeds in your chips. Use a mandolin or a very sharp knife to thinly slice your apples to about 1 8 inch thick. The thinner the slice, the crisper the chip. Line a sheet pan with parchment paper and arrange your apple slices. Sprinkle with cinnamon if desired. Bake in your preheated oven for one hour, flip and then bake for another hour. If the chips are still not crisp, bake in 15 minute increments until they're ready. These alone make a great snack or you can drizzle with chocolate for a sweet treat or steep two into a mug with some cinnamon sticks and honey for a fall tea. Enjoy this sweet and crunchy snack. Start free today at TaxSlayer.com. Welcome back everybody and hopefully you enjoyed Vera's Corner today. You know, we love these little minutes where we can give you tips. Maybe it's a household tip, maybe it's a cleaning tip, but today to give a tip right here in the fall when apples are in season with a great snack that you can make with apples and you can walk away all during the process and check on them from time to time. And then I love to use that as a garnish when I make this cake or even our apple pound cake. That's a, a great dessert as well. All right, so this recipe for applesauce cake is a semi-homemade. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, for me, homemade means you do everything from scratch. But when we wrote this second cookbook, we thought we need to have more recipes that are quick and easy to do that you maybe don't have to go to as much trouble. So this recipe actually uses a yellow cake mix, but please be sure to notice that it has to be a 15 0.25 ounce box of cake mix. They're all different ounce sizes. So to make it appropriately, you need to make sure that you get that size cake mix. So I've already put the cake mix in the bowl, but let me tell you what I did in advance to get ready to make this recipe. So this is my eight by four old school loaf pan that we have used a million times. We used it a few weeks ago to make meatloaf. Now we're using it to make a cake. These things come in so handy. Um, but this is so reminiscent to me of those days in the kitchen with my grandmother because before they had Baker's Joy, you had to butter the pan, then you had to put about a tablespoon of flour, and then you dusted it. Well, well that's what we've done today. We've dusted the pan with cinnamon and sugar. And so that's what makes this semi-homemade because we've added something to it that's going to make the cake remarkable. All right, so to the yellow cake mix, I'm going to add in my eggs. And this is unsweetened applesauce. So again, be sure you look at the jar or the can when you buy your applesauce, because if you get the sweetened, it's going to be way too sweet for this recipe. All right, so I tell you in the book, to stir it with a wooden spoon. Would you believe that I made this when I was in middle school? I painted all of those marks to make this look like a Dutch colonial spoon. And we did this a few years ago with our campers and I'm telling you, the kids absolutely loved it. And that was what we did for the favor for the parents when they came to the banquet. And hopefully those parents will be using those spoons for years to come. All right, so when you're using cake mix, you know, just kind of take your time in mixing it together. You don't want to over mix, but you want to make sure your eggs are incorporated well. So I'm kind of doing more or less of a folding technique here. All right, so I'm going to put half of this batter in my loaf pan. And I think at this point, I'm gonna switch from the spoon to my OXO spatula, which is actually one of my favorite utensils in the kitchen. All right, so let's put half of this in the loaf pan. See, is that about half? It looks like it. All right, I'm gonna spread that around and then Remember when I mixed the cinnamon and sugar earlier, now I'm going to completely cover the top of this batter with that. And what this does is make an amazing look to this cake when you slice it. And that's when the fact that you actually used a cake mix 
can be a secret because nobody's gonna know. All right, I'm gonna stir this up just a little bit more to add the rest of this batter to the pan. And then you see that I have got a ramekin over here because what you don't want to do is overfill this pan. So I am suggesting that you've got enough batter left to either make one muffin or instead of using a whole muffin pan, you know, just use a small ramekin. So let me fill it up. And then if there is any left, I'll put the rest of it in the pan. All right, so we're gonna get this in the oven and this will be ready for our dessert. And you're thinking dessert for tailgating? Absolutely, you've got to have something sweet at the end. So I hope you'll come back and join me. We're gonna be headed down to the Academy of Richmond County for our tailgate. I'll see you in just a few minutes. Welcome back everybody and you know there's no better place in America to celebrate tailgating than right here in Augusta, Georgia at the Academy of Richmond County. It is the oldest chartered high school in America and my family actually has a lot of history with it. My husband's grandfather, his father, my husband, our three sons, and this summer my grandson McCord will graduate from the Academy of Richmond County. So if these walls could talk, there's a lot of family going on here for a long, long time. So it's really been a great, just part of our community and it's a big part of the Augusta community. So we're happy to be here to celebrate tailgating with you. And so, you know, when you think about tailgating, tailgating could be your family room, it could be your patio, or it could be in the stadium with all of your friends and with all of the commotion that goes on at a football game. So what we've done today are three recipes that we think work really well for tailgating, and we hope that you will enjoy making these. They're always available on our website at verivera.com, but they're also in our brand new cookbook. So let's get started with our first recipe today. We did the cheese strips. This recipe, as I told you earlier, was given to me by an older lady that lived across the street from me in Cartersville, Georgia. She was the perfect hostess. And when she gave me this and wrote it in her handwriting on a recipe card, I've used it so many times that the recipe card is absolutely falling apart. But it's easy to do. It takes about an hour to make the whole recipe, but then you've got them in your freezer to pull out if somebody comes in at the last minute for a drink, or if you need something like a nice toast to go with the entree salad for your supper, it's just the perfect dish. Really great warm, but it's also good at room temperature. All right, then the buffalo chicken dip. You know, in the South, it is not a tailgate unless you have buffalo chicken dip. And I think everybody's got their own version of it, but we love ours. It's easy to make. I gave you an idea of maybe instead of shredding the chicken with a fork, to use it in the mixer to make that go faster. But it's really great to take this warm. And so, you know, how are you gonna get it out of the oven at, to the stadium and still be warm? Well, this is when that fresh market bag that I showed you a few weeks ago comes in really handy. You think it's a cooler, but it also acts as an oven if you put something warm in it. So just take it from the oven, wrap it well in aluminum foil, sit it on a pot holder in the bottom, and when you're ready to serve it, it you're gonna see the steam come right out of that bag. It's really great. And if you have any left over, I certainly suggest using it for a cold wrap because that's another great way to use something that you might have left over at the last minute. All right, then the dessert today is the applesauce cake. And you know, it's really hard for me to suggest a cake that's made with the cake mix. But when we were making the second book, we thought, you know, everybody doesn't have time to stand in front of a mixer for a couple of hours to get a homemade cake done. So what recipes do we have in our network that are really amazing that you don't know that are made with the cake mix? And this is one of them. So the applesauce cake, from dusting the pan with the cinnamon sugar to layering it so you've got a beautiful presentation when you slice it. It's a perfect thing for dessert, but it's also great for morning coffee if you're having a, a meeting at work or if you need something different for the kids for breakfast. And it wraps up really well individually in the little plastic bags. All right, so we've got a great look. 
you've made all these recipes, but maybe you're out of time and you need a little bit more. Well, this is when the Fresh Market Grocery Store really comes in handy. Everything from the tortilla chips to the toast rounds and, you know, other things that if you didn't have time to make. I highly recommend their kitchen sink cookies. They are scrumptious. And then the almond cookie is so crisp. And honestly, nobody will know you didn't make it yourself. And so keep that in mind if you need something at the last minute. If your tailgate is in the morning, I really recommend their little muffins. I love the way they package them and they just melt in your mouth. Well, you know, it also can't be tailgate without some sort of look. And for me, it's always going to be between the hedges. And so how did we accomplish that today? We reached out to our friends at Go Buy Plants for some of these boxwood. Love the way that looks. But keep them in mind. If somebody's giving you some amazing tickets to a game or offered their condominium to stay in while you're there, the perfect thank you gift is a plant from Go Buy Plants. So remember that. And as I always say on the Very Vera Show, no matter what what you do, do it in good taste. You've got a lot of great taste here. I hope your season is successful, no matter who your team is, and I hope you'll come back and join me next week.